Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, fifth and last uh, um, seminar of the lecture series on uh, robotics activities at CERN. Today, the speaker is Luca Bonocore. Luca received uh, the master degree in electronic engineering in 2015 with a master thesis in real time visual serving recognition and tracking of aerial robotic platforms. He received a PhD degree in computer and automation engineering at the University of Naples, Federico II, in 2015. His main research interests are the mechatronic design of novel robotic solutions, like mobile robotic platforms and ultralight robotic arms for aerial manipulations. In 2017, he started to work as a research fellow at CERN in the R&D robotic division of B, developing robotic solutions for inspection and maintenance. Right now, he's a staff member at CERN as robotic engineer in charge of robotic and mechatronic design for intervention in harsh environment. So please, uh, Luca, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, many thanks for the introduction. So I think then we start with, the, uh, I will show you the little bit of the line of the discussion. I will start with the, uh, a small introduction about the robot platform itself. I will continue uh, showing you the robot friendly tools that we use uh, at CERP. And also we give a look to, net, to, to the new technology that we are going to develop uh, right now in uh, our section. After that, uh, we can give a look how we uh, take care about design and validation of the new robotic car. And after, uh, we can pass to the intervention in a not robot friendly environment. So it means that uh, when the data is not, uh, not that was not best designed before not to be robot friendly. And also we can give some example of robot friendly design. Uh, on top of that, uh, we, I will show you the quality control uh, process that we have uh, during these, uh, these pieces. And, uh, and after, after that, I will uh, conclude. So we can start with the, the first robot platform developed at the uh, full of the cell. The first, uh, this is the first ground robot platform because there was the, the team chain was already served from uh, some years uh, before. So this uh, sandbot, it's called a sandbot, is a uh, full custom uh, robotic uh, base for full developed at CERN. And uh, in, uh, it's possible to uh, install on it uh, two robotic arms with the gripper in order to be able to perform a bimanual uh, operation. So the idea of this uh, platform is to be uh, modular. So uh, it's possible to uh, exchange model. It is uh, allowed to adapt the, the structure to different tasks and also uh, is uh, uh, it's possible saving time and saving money because we can use a uh, model. We can rearrange this model in order to have different uh, behavior for this platform. In fact, you can see uh, in bottom line, there are three versions of the robot. So the main one with the one robot, one robot car and one camera. The, the crane bot where the, the traction module are uh, removed from the, the platform. And so we use only the core to control the dark. And also uh, with this module, it is possible to add the new feature, new module to, to the structure. So in uh, this picture, it's possible to see then the, we add uh, a lifting system in order to uh, increase the, the potentiality of this, uh, this platform. Uh, just some use case. As you see, this is the robot, uh, the sandbot uh, uh, two. And uh, so in this uh, TCC uh, visual inspection, it's not clear the behavior because uh, this is the, the camera on board the robot because the area was uh, quite hot. And uh, with this lifting system, it was possible to rise the, the camera until to have a good point of view in order to understand if the, this uh, uh, alignment system was uh, uh, not working and why. So it was possible to inspect the system from a high point of view. In the, the, in the, this other video, you can see the behavior of the robot. Also, this is a visual inspection. Where we, in this case, uh, there was an inspection of on the end of uh, full target area. So 
We can continue. I will give you another example of the train bot. This is the, the, the case where the, the, the model, the, the basis model was uh, uh, without uh, uh, traction system. In this case, the task was to uh, install uh, the VAX model in, uh, in CMS. As you see, uh, the robot with the two of body car, of, of course, we need the, the use of the train for the pair alignment, but the small adjustment that can be done with the robotic arm. In this case, it was possible to, uh, to install the model really precisely without any collision. Other uh, functionality that we're going to install to this robot, we have to we talk about uh, modularity. So now is under developing a new uh, module in order to give to uh, give to the robot the possibility to uh, perform a, a hole on the floor. And this is another model that we can uh, attach to the robot, uh, um, avoid to design a new platform from scratch. This is, uh, this is really important for the time consuming also for uh, in order to save uh, uh, money. Uh, starting from the knowledge of the big uh, brother, let's say, like, let's call it this, is we uh, develop a new uh, platform. Also, this platform is based, uh, so the main idea is uh, always to have modularity, to have uh, the idea, to have the possibility to reuse uh, software, hardware, and uh, adapt these uh, uh, small brick in the, the shape, in the, the structure we need to for the intervention. The new module, this new uh, platform is, uh, is the same concept of the old one, but it's compact. So it's possible to send this robot in an uh, area where the space, we have space constraint. And also in this case, we have different configuration. Uh, as you see on the bottom, we can, uh, we can adapt the structure to different types of tasks. For example, the, there are two examples of uh, use. The first one is the, um, these uh, uh, robot with the yellow wheels. This robot is installed in the char and uh, is, um, is mounting only a special camera. So it uses just to, to enter in this, uh, in this area and give a look to the area, you know, the avoiding and the people rest to enter to just give a look. So the robot can be in the area and do visual inspection and check if the, the system is working uh, correctly. A second uh, task for this robot, for some disease and during uh, was a real uh, mission. There was the, the survey of the LSC uh, DAM. As you see, the robot is, uh, is really compact, so it's fitting in a really small uh, space. And it's possible to perform a task, uh, in this case, as a radioactive uh, survey. <clears throat> in this case, we was in contact. And second side, we was with the uh, where with the um, uh, say a piece of plastic to understand which, which which was the real distance from from the dam. So let's continue. The last uh, uh, the last robot that we develop uh, like in, in this family or ground robot is still more, smaller of the of the other, since uh, we, for this robot we have to there was a constraint to pass uh, below the, the small aperture of the door, the yellow door in SPS. So the space of this door is uh, 200 uh, centimeter uh, per uh, 400. So it's really, uh, really, really small, space, small space. And uh, the, the challenge in this case was to, to fit everything called the functional part on this uh, small robot that, uh, as you see, so this is the passage of the, of the door. Okay. This robot is uh, uh, now is uh, teleoperated, so the, the survey is done uh, by, by hand. But in the future, we now we're going to develop the automatic, autonomous navigation system in order to perform the full uh, term, the full inspection of the SPS, and also uh, should be able to come back to the charging station. This charging station, and there's a magnetic connector on the side, and the robot is able to connect and put automatically at the charge. The, the charging station is not just a charging station, there is a PLC on top, then we will take care about the, the temperature, battery status, and the, all the, the, the condition of the robot that means it's all at the, on the ground. So at this point, I will introduce you also the, the tools that we use for the, for the intervention. Another important thing are not only the platform, but are the, the tool where we are going to use the doing intervention. The typically, uh, so the, the, 
the commercial tool are not they are not in com in, uh, in commerce tool and they will fit our needs since uh, typically the, the tool producer are not uh, interested to have a, a tool and we, we can control from far so the our idea was to use uh, the the main the core of the tool so the, the, the commercial part and with the uh, reverse engineering we was able to uh, understand how the motor was working. And uh, in this case, we, uh, after the study, we was able to install on, uh, on the robot uh, um, a motor driver that we can control in uh, this. Sometimes we use either car, sometimes we have to use other kind of uh, protocol to, to connect. So for example, you can see in, uh, in the small picture, in the first picture, it was the first version where the, the, the driver was just uh, a screwdriver. This is an impact drive. And the, the, the driver, impact is driver, sorry, impact wrench. And uh, outside is installed uh, um, the motor driver. Uh, since the prototype was working well, uh, we uh, passed to the engineering of this system. And you, you can see the, we develop a, a really a robot, uh, robotic screwdriver with the, this flange on the back that is able to connect directly to the robotic car, avoiding uh, cable outside and uh, problems. If outside a waste is, uh, is a problem because you can uh, hang something during the operation. In uh, the last picture, you can see another tool. This is a scissor, but uh, in this case, the scissor was uh, uh, was working on the can bus communication. How we use this tool? So this was the first application uh, was the, the BDF uh, simple extraction. As you see, so there was collaboration between the Sandbot and also Teodo. As you see, the tool was working uh, quite okay. And uh, the, uh, the operation was composed to different different kinds of different, many uh, kind of tasks. It was the opening of the of the core, was the, the cutting of the wire, the extraction, okay, the, 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 we adjust the, the foot of the system that could be aligned with the, the pipe. At that point it was possible to extract the core. After the, the handling, also, the, the core was important to extract the core. As you see, this is the first version of the, of the screwdriver where the, the motor diary was outside. And, uh, oops. Okay, after that, it was possible to extract the tool. This tool is then, it was, designed, uh, was designed by STI. So, all this intervention was done in collaboration with the STI, also the, the pre, pre design and the, the physics study. Okay, as you see, we, we not only ask you, but we was able to close this uh, this box with the, the simple and put away in that control and uh, in the shield. Let's continue. Since the the tool uh, the the screwdriver the impact range was working well, we choose to develop also a screwdriver because some for some application is important to. Uh, to really know which is the torque we're going to apply to the screw. It's important to know the speed that we're going to uh, apply to the, to the system. And uh, since we have this good control, we can uh, easily perform uh, delicate tasks like uh, the, the sampling. So in this case, we were, we, uh, were, were performing a, a call in the this, this, uh, high density graphite sample. The, okay, as I said told you before, the, the respect to the upper range, we can uh, regulate speed, uh, torque, and uh, position. The position is important, for example, uh, in uh, box uh, problem, the, the box example I mentioned you before, because in order to respect the, um, the vacuum constraint, the, the, uh, the, uh, the design of the, of the box gives us uh, exactly the number of turns that we have to apply to, to the screw. So we're able to count the number of turns and so uh, give to the to them the real uh, let's say the, to respect the them constraint and so we can fulfill the the functionality of the, of the, the system continue to the to the tooling after that uh, we um, we start to develop uh, another family of tooling so the idea is to uh, send a robot and perform machining operation in uh, in in the radioactive area. For example, this was a study case where the, they asked to, um, um, to open and inspect the core, the, the lead core of the, um, and the, the end of target tool. So the, the, the goal was to open the target and expect the, 
of the core without uh, uh, damage the, um, the, the the core and also the since the, the important part was the center so the as big we can do the the whole better it is so as you see the two robotic cars with uh, we developed these uh, this framework and it was able to uh, machine remotely uh, aluminium in this case and with the second robotic arm, we're able to grasp the, the piece that we're going to, to remove and uh, easily open target and put away the part we're going to, to remove. Of course, this is, was a case of study. Uh, is missing a steel study for the vacuum cleaning and other steps that we need to focus on. Based on that, uh, we, uh, oops. <clears throat> Based on that, we uh, we study the the other shielding uh, modification. The, for this in this case, uh, uh, the, the robot is not uh, that small; it's a quite bigger big robot. And for that case, we just did a feasibility study because we don't have the the shielding to machine. Uh, but uh, um, the, the study the, the, of the system, we develop a framework and is able to uh, uh, starting from the from the piece that we got, we have to, to remove, we, we, we know how to, uh, to to design the trajectory in order to perform these uh, these this milling. This was just a study. Uh, after that, the, for the same kind of uh, the same kind of robots, the robots in the kind of technology, there was uh, um, another task that we uh, we started. It was the the the, um, the needs to open the, the TDA of the LSC. Uh, the problem with this TDA is the problem. From, for us, it's a problem. This is the, the really hard material, really hard steel, and it was, uh, was made this, uh, this vessel. Also, there are uh, side constraints like the low temperature, low, low temperature cutting, and also we have to uh, machine this pipe without any cooling system. Of course, the, the, the contamination also is important in this kind of, uh, of machine. As you see, uh, we still led uh, in uh, 9 to 7 um, robotic cell with uh, a control station outside, and then inside the yellow area is the safety, safety cage. We still led the robot with, the, um, with the, the spindle and also a sensor inside. The sensor is, uh, is really important since uh, um, we have to understand where is the, the piece that we need to machine with respect to the framework the, of, of the robot. In order to uh, perform this, uh, this calibration, there is a um, linear sensor. In the, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it yes. With this linear sensor with a contact point, so we can uh, measure where, where, um, which is the distance between the sensor and, uh, and the robot. After that, uh, um, with, uh, um, with the inverse schematic, we can uh, understand which, which, which are the uh, surface point of the pipe. And with an interpolation, we can understand which is the, the, the position of the pipe. This step uh, is really important uh, because the machining, uh, as you see, machining is done uh, following the, um, the surface. So the, the, in order to make this kind of machining is really important to the, the calibration because uh, as you can imagine, uh, if the, the, the position of the, of the pipe is different respect to the, the, the real trajectory of the robot, it's impossible to perform this kind of, uh, of machine. So uh, this, is, this was a test done on, uh, on the real material with the, the final configuration of the robot, so the tool selected for this uh, application. Another test that we, we performed is the, uh, the validation about the temperature, because of course we cannot reach a high temperature in the, during this uh, this machining, and so with thermal cover we was able to uh, detect which was the, the peak and uh, the, the condition of the of the machine of the tools during the, the machine. This is uh, quite nice, and also we discovered that uh, uh, we can also understand which is the status of, status of the tool starting from the vibration, starting from the, the temperature. So in the theory, um, uh, with the analysis of the, of the data, real time of the vibration, we can understand when is the, mo the, the moment to change the tool in order to have the best result in, uh, in the machine. These are the, I will show you the last step of the opening of the, of the dam. This is the, the two side uh, final cut. 
the, the shape of this V shape was studied in order to uh, avoid uh, that tool will be stuck inside the pipe during this last phase because the, the stress inside the pipe was uh, not to know it, know it was not uh, you know before not before and so there was possibility that the pipe is tend to open like you see in this video the pipe could be uh, should close this can uh, it could be a problem since the, the tool that can be stuck inside. Instead, with the with this V shape, the uh, also if the pipe was the uh, closing on the, on the tool, the tool will be uh, let's say pushed outside of the of the cutting uh, uh, pocket. Uh, let's continue. Okay. So um, as I told you before, was uh, was important to uh, then the, the chips was big enough to be treated in. Uh, in safety way because uh, of course will, this will be chips of uh, radioactive material and uh, uh, it's important and we don't spend about this, uh, this kind of contamination. Uh, vacuum cleaner also will be installed really close to the, to the drilling bit in order to uh, collect the uh, maximum we can the, the dust product the producer during this, uh, this machine. Another good point is then uh, with this system, the tool exchange will be done uh, far from the uh, radioactive uh, material that we're going to, to machine. So this is also a good point since we can uh, we can be far from the from the risk and also we can we could also shield this area in order to be even uh, safer. Let's say like uh, another point is then for this robot, for example, it was not possible to. Uh, um, to choose an automatic tool exchange, but for the two robots, and I showed you before, for uh, Entoff was already in the uh, program to have an automatic tool exchange. So the our idea is then uh, um, to limit that maximum that we can uh, the presence of the human when where there are these uh, risky uh, tasks to, to perform. So now we can, uh, I will show you the how the design of the robotic uh, arm is uh, performed. Maybe you saw you you already saw this video many times in the in the, this week. So this is the DL wagon. This is the, the operation of gas and the source. I will go fast because for sure you know this video really, really, really well. So the the project of this wagon starts from uh, really at the constraint because in uh, in the wagon we have to fit uh, a robotic arm with the nine degree of freedom uh, six from the commercial uh, robotic arm this black one that you see is an ultralight uh, robotic arm and uh, plus uh, three degree of freedom uh, done from the linear stage and the other two join uh, in uh, placed in the inside the wagon the the space constraint in this uh, project is really really uh, I say this is the biggest constraint for the project because we have to try to fit everything in this wagon, and uh, uh, we was able to do it. And uh, at the end, in this wagon, there are more, even more motor. This is the motor the, uh, needed for the uh, stabili stabili stabilizer. The, this system is uh, is needed in order to stabilize the wagon when the arm is fully extended. Because of course, in this case, we will have. Uh, Lot of torque on the way, and we cannot uh, uh, allow the wagon is uh, is uh, flipping without control. So with this system, we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, adjust the backlash and uh, reduce it uh, uh, to zero. So uh, you saw the the shielding. Of course, the shielding uh, is uh, is not the is uh, is uh, I say. Uh, is the final version of many, many attempts. So the idea is then uh, the, the source should be inside uh, at maximum we can, so inside the, the core of the shielding. And after we need to open it and uh, uh, extract the, the, the source. The, we talk about space constraint. Space constraint is also um, affect the shield design because in, uh, in that small space, we need to uh, to fit the shielding, we need to so, uh, take care about the, the space, the, the weight, because of course with the shield cannot weigh 200 kilograms because we have to handle it. And uh, all these uh, constraints uh, bring us to have a, 
to choose the tungsten in order to have the maximum shielding property for the core of the of the shielding. And uh, uh, but the tungsten part, this uh, internal part that you can see here, is uh, uh, encapsulated in aluminum part for the uh, functionality. So it was not uh, needed to. No, the idea is then. Uh, separate the shielding property from the functional property. So in this case, the, the interface, the Artania aluminum, uh, stainless steel, and the, the, the core, the core of this uh, sphere in center is in syntax. And that allowed us to have, uh, uh, to reduce the weight, reduce the, the volume. And uh, also with this, if you see the, the tungsten part are ma uh, made in the layer. So made this uh, part in layer also reduce the tungsten machining cost. So it was big, big compromise of uh, constraint. Uh, after the, the pre-design, we, uh, of course, with the, the help of our FP, we, we did some uh, simulation to understand if the, if the, the, the shielding property will respect the, 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 the dose rate allowed in tunnel, and also if it's possible to work in proximity of uh, the shielding. So since the result was, uh, really promising, uh, we go ahead. And uh, um, of course, it's not the shield, not only shielding, the shielding is installed on the train. So we have to take care about the, the safety of the, of the source. In order to respect this, uh, this constraint, the, 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 there is a many electronic uh, safety electronic around the shielding. For example, there is an absolute encoder on, on top of the shielding, so we can understand which is the position of the internal part of the shielding uh, every time. Also, in case of power cut, we can come back and check which is the status of the, of the shielding. There are some cables then uh, uh, pass through the core until the outside of the, of, the, of the wagon, so we can understand which is the real status of the source. It is uh, well connected. And uh, these electronic is uh, all passive. So inside the shield, they are all electronic, passive electronic, just cable. And uh, <coughs> the mesh system is all outside. As you see here, there is a handle in order to lock the shielding uh, inside the wagon with these orange uh, ring. And also, there is this safety pin in order to uh, lock the system in order to avoid and see the, the, the shielding, remove it in uh, not in safety way. Of course, there is, or the, there is the, the handling of the source. The handling of the source is, uh, was a big problem since the, the source is quite small, as you see in this, uh, this picture. And also, uh, was needed to install a, a second nut for safety. The accessor tool was uh, uh, designer in order to uh, handle these uh, small source and handle these small nut. For example, a magnetic key was developed in order to uh, take in place the nut during the operational security. Uh, sometimes it's uh, developed a smart procedure, smart tool, is uh, uh, faster and also simpler than uh, using a hand. Because also, if you would like to do this operation by hand, it will be really complicated to handle this kind of uh, shape because we don't have any grasping point. And this is really small uh, nut. After the design of this uh, installation procedure, the, we performed the installation with, uh, with Telemax. As you see, the, there was this uh, module, this cone, that was uh, needed in order to guide the, the source in a real position. Once the, the source is aligned, we can remove, the, we can remove this cone. And uh, with this uh, uh, grasping system, we squeeze the source inside uh, to, in order to take it in position. And after we're going to, <clears throat> to install the, the handle and the safety nut with this uh, uh, magnetic tool. Once the, the system is installed, okay, now we're going to check uh, the presence of the source and also the code uh, of the source. With the robot, we, we can install the source inside the internal part of the shielding. Once to the source inside, you can see the safety pin, the, the locking pin are aligned. The robot is able to close the shielding, and now the source will be in uh, inside the, the internal part of the tungsten uh, layer. So the source is uh, safe. 
uh, after the distillation, of course, with the FP, we did uh, some measure in order to understand if the the the, the, sewer, the, the, the shield was working well. And the, the measure done uh, are really really good because then uh, the bubble are quite small. <laughs> Let's continue. The um, the tool design is uh, really important uh, when uh, the tool design validation is really important when the uh, the area is not uh, designed to be robot friendly. For example, this is the case where the, it was the end of target two dismantling. So the target two was uh, not designed to be dismantled uh, by robot. So the it was necessary to plan a design tool uh, for this uh, for this task. For example. Uh, um, the, the main uh, task we performed with the robot was to uh, the drain uh, water, the, 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 the cooling water inside the, still inside the target, and also to cut uh, the aluminum profile, uh, the, the pipe, the cooling pipe, this cooling pipe, then go inside the target. Uh, before to, uh, to perform this task, of course, it's, uh, it's important uh, uh, analysis of the position of the robot to test in uh, virtual reality also this kind of uh, <clears throat> this kind of intervention because we have to be uh, prepared and uh, aware about the everything that we can uh, we can face during this intervention. Of course, there are something that we cannot. Uh, uh, Foreseen, but uh, this we can cover this uh, expected scenario with uh, experience. So, um, and this is the, the final uh, the final intervention. The sample one in this case was equipped with a big shear, and uh, the second robotic body cam in on the back with the, was, was was equipped with a radio protection sensor and a, a, a gripper. As you see, the the robot. Uh, before to cut the, the pipe, install this safety uh, safety hook in order to avoid, uh, in case we lose the, 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 the grasp of the, of the pipe, how we then the, the pipe fall down. So we have to think more or less also to the problem that can happen. The, the real task was to cut the pipe really close to the structure in order to um, fit the, the target in uh, in the waste container, and this task was uh, was performed uh, properly. After that, there was a second phase of this intervention. It was the the FP survey. So we survey we we checked which was the, the, the additional condition, and also we did the smearing test in order to understand if there was contamination on the surface. This was performed with the sandbot too. Um, okay, the last uh, uh, the last part was the drilling in order to drain the water. So and also this task was done already with the, but using uh, Telo. <clears throat> so uh, another example where the uh, the the area is not uh, is not designed is not uh, studied in order to be all friendly is the near facility uh, sample simple grid preparation. Uh, after the study of the area, the, um, and uh, also to take care about the communication for G and uh, everything of the area, so we have to study more or less the, the site field, then uh, we need to where we have to go. The, the only solution was to uh, develop um, uh, impact range, but in this case, we was needed impact range. Uh, uh, with L shape because the position of the nut was uh, really close to the to, to the to the pool. It was impossible to use the Howard standard uh, impact range. So uh, since the uh, we was obliged to use the Theodore and Telemax, since there was some rail on the floor, the sandbot cannot pass through this rail for now. Uh, we was obliged to develop a new tool, but in this case it was based on the LoRa LoRa communication channel. Uh, this is the real intervention where the, the Telemax was in charge to unscrew the, the collar, and then the, the Theodore was able to uh, was handy, hanging and uh, move the, the, the pipe. After that, so this is the second pipe. And uh, the second pipe after that it was possible to uh, feed the area. After that, we did also our vacuum cleaning. Uh, with the vacuum clean, we also cleaned all the system to remove the, the contaminated the, the, the dust that was contaminated. 
the these uh, uh, this step was needed in order to install the grid for the simple grid on the on the target uh, on the on the pool the, the dot pool uh, target pool and uh, um, thanks to that with the telemax we was able to install uh, uh, 24 simple really close to the target so the spend the spend was possible to be performed the another instance now we're going to see uh, when the the design is uh, uh, including the robotic uh, uh, point of view from the beginning for example in this case uh, the the task was to install a gasket remotely in this case the collaboration started from the beginning so we was able to uh, design some align pin to be uh, integrated on the, on the flange of the collimator this uh, um, this uh, this tool is uh, is equipped with the three endoscopic camera since uh, the alignment of the of the of the, of the gasket was was really important because we should be the decision should be in parallel with the flange of the gasket so the idea is to install the three endoscopic camera in the, the three in the three touching point in this case we uh, it's possible to avoid the parallax error since we have three point of view and we can understand when we are aligned with this, uh, this three point. So the just to, to show you how is uh, is composed this uh, this system is uh, with the pressure ring, then we press the, the gasket to the collimator flange. And with uh, this elastic uh, system, it's possible to uh, connect the, the the gasket to the flange. In the, um, all the, the design, of course, needs validation. So in this case, the validation was uh, uh, about the formation because, uh, as I told you, the, the flatness of the of the gasket is really important. So we tested uh, if uh, the the stress uh, that we apply with the robot uh, can deform the the tool. And also, starting from this number, we can understand which kind of which is the best robot and which is the uh, the best platform that we can use for the, for the application. This is the, the, um, the, the test that we share with that. As you see, is super fast because the tool uh, is, uh, is when the tool is, is aligned, the insection of the gasket is uh, super fast. So the tool uh, is working uh, is working well. And this it means in the future we can avoid the uh, installation time. Now we can go far with the gasket is still in place. Another uh, good uh, collaboration is uh, with STI was to the, 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 the adaptation of the TADVG file uh, fit. In this case, the, the task was to, uh, to dismount the fit. This dismounting was uh, performed with the structure of this uh, gray pin, this one. At the beginning, uh, the design was uh, to uh, push, pull out the, these. Uh, uh, this pin in this direction from uh, to the ground, and after I stuck the pin. The um, thanks to the collaboration, we uh, we was able to um, design a system like the one you see here. Then uh, we have the same uh, feature, so the pin is locked in position, but with the one end you can uh, uh, you can stack the pin. So just rotating it and stuck in uh, the that direction. Also, this test, also for this test, it was important to perform uh, reachability test and understand when, if it's possible to perform this task uh, with uh, the robot, uh, which platform we are obliged to use or is uh, best suitable for the, for the application. Um, as you see, okay, the, during the video, you can see the, the procedure. For example, during the, the procedure, it's important uh, the test because during the, the test phase, of course, we cannot foresee everything. We discovered and uh, it was important to understand uh, where was the center of mass of the pin for the in order to help uh, the, the handling of the pin. For that, we we, we mark the center of mass for the pin with this uh, this line and we have like a, a couple line for the to understand, to understand when the pin is inside that we can release the pin. And uh, as you see now, the the manipulation of the pin is is really simple because we know exactly where we have to grasp the pin. And uh, this is also uh, in the documentation. So in the future, when where when is needed this uh, this intervention, the operator know exactly where has to grasp the, the pin, and uh, in which way has to uh, operate the, the robot. 
This is the, the As I told you, um, all the system, all the module are going to install the robot need, uh, needs validation and study in order to understand if they are uh, uh, good enough for the application of, uh, or, uh, or if we need to uh, develop other solution. For example, uh, we talk about the lifting system of the sandbox two. Uh, we did the simulation in order to understand if uh, the elasticity of the system was uh, uh, inside the safety uh, parameter. And uh, on top of that, uh, we also start to study a solution to uh, reduce this kind of uh, oscillation in case we need the, the operation more precise or we need more stability in, uh, in high. And uh, using uh, ANSYS, we do we study uh, these kind of uh, oscillation, and we, we study also the, the behavior of the system. For example, passing to two side uh, lifting system to this lifting system, we can gain uh, a factor of ten uh, or less of uh, <clears throat> uh, displacement. Of course, we have to take care about the uh, the. The quality, the quality control of the system, of our system, we have to track the design, we have to uh, ensure that the design are done properly. And uh, in order to do this, we uh, we use uh, CDD. And uh, in this uh, in this way, we have this step uh, of uh, checking the designer uh, for the first control, the second control. Thanks to this, uh, we can ensure then the the quality of the of the robot is. Uh, it's okay for the standard and also uh, take track for the future in order to have, uh, uh, I say, gain experience from this, uh, from our design. From the from quality point of view, also we do a quality check on the, the cavity, uh, RF cavity. So there the was uh, another project then uh, we designed a robotic, uh, uh, robotic arm able to fit, um, <clears throat> to enter in this uh, radio, um, radio frequency cavity and uh, inspect the surface of the, of the cavity. Because in this, in this uh, cavity, the, the, say, the electromagnetic, field, electromagnetic field is uh, really high. So uh, in case of scratch, in case of uh, uh, defect of the coating, uh, the superconducting coating, the, the electronic field in that spot will be super high, so we can have a burned uh, dot. So with this inspection, we are able to uh, give a feedback about the quality of the coating inside the, the cavity. <clears throat> uh, we go to, to the hand. So this is a, just an, an overview about uh, the, the intervention done in 2021. So there are more or less 20 interventions. That means then uh, we did intervention every two weeks, more or less. This is not, uh, uh, it's not uh, only the intervention because this is the intervention, but the, behind the intervention, there is a lot of uh, work. So it's not that we're able to do an intervention every two weeks, but uh, every two weeks is, uh, <laughs> is the intervention. I like to say then uh, the, the video you saw before of the, of the cake, but in the kitchen, there are a lot of dirty stuff to clean. So from our expertise, we saw then uh, we can uh, uh, do this graph where we can uh, uh, show the intervention time respect to preparation time. Of course, this, uh, this line is, uh, this graph, this area, for example, is dependent from the complexity. So of course, if the, the, the intervention is complex, we need more time for preparation and for intervention. But uh, uh, when the intervention is well planned, the, uh, the intervention time is reduced. For example, there is a, I bring you the example of the um, source installation because we did two times. The first time we spend more time to a lot of time to develop the, the tool, the, the procedure to install the source. But the, the second time then we was able to, we was needed to install the source, we go in this experience. Because the, we know we have uh, the tool, we have the knowledge, we have the robot, so the all the all the preparation time is uh, reduced to zero. So the preparation time is just the installation of the robot, the, the moving and so on. But the intervention time is really, really, really small. Conclusion: uh, uh, I give you an review about the intervention, uh, about the intervention, the uh, presented, and giving you about the potentiality of the robot itself. Uh, 
um, these uh, I showed you, which is the difference between the uh, what, um, when, when the design is old friendly and when uh, the design is not uh, old friendly. Also, to, uh, to intervene in emergencies, giving a, and giving a fast action time is possible thanks to the experience gain and uh, the, on the field. And uh, so, with this experience, we were able to adapt the tool in uh, then we are already in stock. Of course, if there is something it's impossible to do at the moment, we have to start. The, the quality and control of the tools of the, uh, of the modules, modules platform is mandatory to guarantee uh, the mechatonic functionality. And also, this is thanks to the to track the, the design and uh, have a control check on uh, on the on the design phase and production. Also, show you the new technology and the study. Then uh, will give us more uh, more brick, more tool than we can use for the future uh, application set. And uh, all the experience uh, gained during this intervention and test are reported in a document uh, is the cool, uh, cool, uh, the code of practice. Then it can guide uh, the, to design a novel module and uh, for robotic uh, friendly uh, machine component. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Luca. Very interesting, impressive as usual. Oh, are there any questions or comments for Luca? Indeed, you showed uh, plenty of impressive videos about interventions. Thank you. It is really nice. So I believe that all this will become more and more <clears throat> important for future machines like the FCC, as we saw with Hannes yesterday. Yeah, we saw with Hannes anyway, with, uh, with a tunnel of 100 kilometers, I think the robotic uh, fan solution is, is mandatory. Because of course, the, the, to reach the point is uh, time consuming. So, if the, the, the machine is more robot friendly, we can uh, increase the, the, the use of the automation and the robotic platform in the uh, system. This will be oh, sure, of course. Do you have an idea about because uh, some of your, of your interventions are made to spare those delivered to personnel? Um, is there any estimate about uh, what has been already spared to certain personnel thanks to the use of robots and what could be in the future this gain? Okay, this is a, a really complex question. So as you see, uh, we did an estimation of the, this is the, the intervention. The one in orange our intervention it means that the robot uh, take those. For example, we, uh, we estimated the number of hours needed for the intervention. We estimate the, uh, we measure the, the dose took from uh, to the robot with the sand. So we have a dose meter of the robot. And the basis of the complexity, the complexity of the task, we have this uh, uh, human uh, proficient. So uh, understand which is the, the complexity of the task. We can estimate how is the, the how many times the, the human can uh, can spend in order to perform this task. And this is the uh, saved dose. Oops. This is the saved dose to, to the human. And uh, of course, it's nice. okay. Okay. But uh, and then, of course, you can also uh, see how much you could extend this uh, approach in order to uh, say, in order to save even more dose to personnel. Yeah, yeah, but this is uh, uh, this is clear. So if we, uh, it also is in parallel with the study of the robot friend solution, because of course there are some tasks and uh, until now are not possible to do by by all because the machine the accessibility is not um, doesn't allow the us to enter right now. But of course uh, our study our uh, our uh, say our goal is to design machine uh, robot even be smaller or with the other kind of future in order to, uh, I would say, uh, try to fulfill all these needs and uh, save uh, even more of those in the future. Okay. I see two questions. Uh, so the first one, 
Uh, I don't know who is behind Laura's uh, iPad. Um, it's Laura. Um, I used to teach CAD CAM in robotics at university, so I have an appreciation for how much time and effort you can save in a robotic intervention when the equipment and the environment is designed for robotics. With that in mind, do you foresee any future training for designers at CERN uh, where they can get hands-on experience of using your robots and use that to improve their designs? Um, no, it's not uh, it's really a nice idea, but yeah, we don't foresee these uh, any courses for, the, for design. We have collaboration with the uh, university, so we, we share uh, knowledge with the university, we collaborate with the university, but CAD uh, courses, no, it's not, uh, it's not in pain for now. You don't think it could save you a lot of time and effort in the future? Sorry? You don't think that teaching the designers to build better equipment and better environments? No, no, that, no, no, that's for sure. In the future, yes, we need these uh, designers for, for, yeah. Because I understand part of the question uh, means that you should have also an environment that is suitable for robotic intervention. We have uh, what do you mean? So the, the environment. The sense, for, for instance, let's look at the FCC. It would be good to design uh, the tunnels and the civil engineering infrastructure in such a way that you can inter intervene with the robot. If this is not done, perhaps uh, it will make the design of the robot much harder. Uh, yes, this is true. So in fact, uh, for that, the, the, the design of our robot is based on modularity. Because uh, uh, we cannot design a robot uh, than uh, just for one application. We are a robot, and uh, we try to adjust the shape of the robot and the functionality of the robot for the for the application. The, of course, uh, yes. The, the, if the, the environment is not uh, uh, well known, we are obliged to spend more time on the robot design. Of course, if the environment is known, the life is simple for. Okay, thanks a lot, Luca. So two more questions uh, from Chu Tan. Hello. Oh, okay, hello everyone. Yes, please. Okay, All right. thank you, Mr. Luca, for this. You're welcome. Okay. Hi. Hi. I did hear the question. Okay, can you hear me? Sorry, we can okay. hardly hear you. There is a problem with the connection very uh, Okay, okay. So maybe I will chat it, uh, ask the question on the yes, chat box. perfect. Okay. So while you type in the, the, the question, perhaps, uh, Guilain, you can go with uh, your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this was a, a very interesting talk and a very interesting series of talk actually the, for the for the whole week. I have a question. You've you've shown how you can actually intervene in very high radiation areas, but that is remnant radiation. Do you have any idea whether you could actually in the future intervene as the beams are operating, where we have very high prompt radiation coming from the beams? Is is that a possibility that you are actually contemplating or that, that we should pursue? The, the question is about the, the, the electronic of the machine, because then we are, anyway, we are uh, obliged to <clears throat> use, uh, uh, for now we're using a commercial electronic, because then uh, for the level of radiation that we're going to face, uh, the commercial, uh, commercial electronic is uh, a good compromise between cost and uh, uh, use life. Because uh, the, it's uh, quite difficult to develop uh, radar, the camera, radar, radar, the PC, and so on. So, of course, if the, the needs uh, push us to operate in, uh, in a condition of when the beam is on, uh, we have to develop uh, pro proper electronic and the proper uh, device and able to resist to, the, to this kind of condition. Uh, we can, we also have the, the help of charge in case we would like to test the device. So, it's possible to it's possible to do, but until now we are not uh, uh, obliged to, to to work in this kind of condition. 
Yes, but in, in the case of the FCC, for example, that could mean uh, a world of difference if we could do some of the interventions during while the beam is running. Um, and also this would open a whole new game because we could actually do surveys or interventions where people can absolutely not do it. At the moment, you're just replacing people interventions uh, to, to save some radiation to, to the personnel. But in the case of beams running, it's just excluded that we can send any person in there. And therefore that would open a, a whole new class of possibilities for the maintenance and operation of the machines. Now, this is a really good, good point. So of course we can take some, uh, uh, how to say, um, some adjustment. For example, we have developed in the medicine and so that already work in the uh, high radiation condition. In that case, the, all uh, the electronic, the active electronic was deployed uh, far from the, from the robot. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in F for FCC, we can think about this uh, this kind of solution, and also so the, the good that you open this point uh, now because uh, it's important to have the completely the complete uh, overview of the problem and uh, they are in the future because we can take account of this problem during the, the project and during the design phase. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Luca. Thank you. And now we got the, the, the question from Chu Tan in the in the chat. Yep. It's essentially, is an undergraduate and is asking, say, the three, five uh, most important skills that uh, a student should uh, be acquire in order to work as a robotics engineer at CERN. Okay, let's say starting from the passion, passion, fantasy, and uh, motivation. So the, the of course there is a technical skill that are important, but uh, I think in uh, sometimes the, the technical skill could be covered from the passion and the the say the love that you put in your work. I I, I fully I fully understand and I fully agree with this. Now, given that the answer came from an undergraduate student, I think the idea here is to get the technical skills. So what would be the, the, the most relevant technical skills? The, the robotic is, uh, is a field and really uh, cover many, many uh, fields. So in robotic, we have mechanic, we have mechatronic, we have electronic, we have programming. So the I think then uh, it's really complicated to uh, resume the, the work done in robotic in uh, skills because then we have different uh, sector, different uh, uh, study uh, area. And so, the, for example, the, the, the skill in uh, informatics will are super uh, accepted as a super uh, useful skill in the mechanics, super useful skill in mechatronics, skill in uh, electronic. So it's difficult to say I need this skill because the robot is really a fusion of uh, many, many, uh, uh, let's say, engineering uh, uh, knowledge. Okay. Uh, I think, Luca, this is a very good answer. Uh, it gives an idea at least. So I think uh, you need to have several skills uh, and the passion. Yep. Uh, I hope... Uh, Chutan, that this is uh, an answer that will be useful for you in your future. Are there any other comments or questions for Luca? Okay, so Chutan thanks us uh, for, for, for the discussion. So it seems there are no additional questions or comments. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Luca again for, for the talk today and of course uh, all the speakers for, for this series of uh, of lectures uh, this week. Thanks a lot for all this. Uh, I would like to, to wish you a good lunch and let's break here. Thanks a lot to everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye -bye.